Whoa, what the hell is happening? Welcome fantastic people to yet another Unity tutorial. This time we'll be implementing top-down movement as known from the games like Stardew Valley or Don't Starve. Let's start the implementation. I'm selecting the character and adding Capsule Collider 2D to it. I am changing its direction to horizontal so it's slightly easier to adjust. I'm changing the Y offset to move it around the character's feet. Then I'm resizing it a little bit. Now it's time to add Rigid Body 2D. We don't want the character to be affected by gravity, so we change the gravity scale to zero. Oh, and don't forget to freeze the character's rotation in Z-axis. Otherwise, the character will start spinning uncontrollably after first collision, as you've seen in the intro. Let's create a new script and name it player. We add it to the character and open it up. Then we remove all the unnecessary stuff. We can add headers so our variables are nicely organized. Then we create serialized speed variable. Then another private one to store the rigid body. We grab the component and store it in the variable in the start method. Time to get the player's input. In the update method we create player input variable. We'll store in it new vector2 containing horizontal and vertical input axis. Simply saying, we'll store that information if the player is pressing an arrow key or uses movement stick on the path. Now we need to normalize the value. Wait, what? Fury time! We have our input vector. Of course it contains information about what buttons have been pressed. So if the player presses up key, we assign 1 to the Y axis. For the right arrow key we assign 1 to X axis. Let's draw it out. Awesome, but what happens if the player presses up and right at the same time? On the first glance everything looks alright. But if we compare the lengths of the vectors, then we see we have a little problem. When moving diagonally, our character will move a little bit quicker. To fix it, we can normalize our input vector. Unity will make a little bit of magic for us and ensure that whatever the direction is, the length of the vector will be always the same. Good, let's get back to implementation. As discussed, we normalize the input vector and store it in the new variable. Now to make the character move, we need to modify velocity of our character's rigid body. We simply assign there our normalized input times speed. The base of our movement is ready. We can assign the speed in the inspector and test it. Not bad, but looks pretty dull. In our script, let's create another header, this time for variables related to animation. I need six serialized variables, two game objects, one for head and one for body, and four sprites. Two for the head, front and back, and two for the body, front and back. Oh, and one more for the character's animator. This one we can assign in the start method. In the animator I set up my animations so they rely on the ease walking boolean parameter. In the script I set it using the setBool method of the animator. I want it to be true whenever there's an input. Easy. Now let's make the character look left and right. If there is any horizontal input, I change the local scale of the character. Of course only in the x-axis. We can use for that sign method that returns minus 1 for all negative numbers and 1 for all positive ones and 0. Before we test it out, like this video and subscribe to my channel. This will help me grow and create more content like this for fantastic people like you. Ok, let's see how it's looking. Not bad. Now let's make the character look up and down. We'll use for that the variables created earlier. I'm assigning the head and body game objects to the head and body variables. That's because I will want to change their sprite when the character is looking up. Then I will grab the front and back sprites of the head and body and drop them in the right variables. Awesome, let's get back to code. Depending on if the character is moving up or down, we'll assign different sprites. To do that we first grab the sprite renderers of the head and body game objects. Then if the character is moving up we change their sprite to the back version. If it's moving down we change it to the front version. If your sprites are designed correctly that's all you have to do. Unfortunately one of my sprites is flipped the wrong way. Luckily for us it's very easy to fix. We can use for that the flip x variable of the head sprite renderer. If you are wondering how I implemented those animations, you can check out this tutorial. Or this one, if you want simpler and quicker version. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.